If you're in your first microeconomics class, I can guarantee you're gonna be working with price controls. Here's how to know if a price floor or ceiling is non-binding. And before we get started here, if you need someone to just walk you through your entire class, go check out my microeconomics cram kit. It's got the concept breakdowns and practice problems that I would walk through with you if I were your tutor. All right, so let's start with visualizing here what a non-binding price floor would look like. Remember, price floors are minimum prices that the market can operate at. Currently, this market is operating at this price. So what would happen if the price floor were set below this price? Well, remember that price floor is basically invalidating any prices below its value, but the market's operating at this P star value that's already above the floor. So consumers and producers are just gonna go, okay, cool, we don't care that your price floor is below our already existing equilibrium price. And in turn, this would be a non-binding price floor. It's non-binding because it's not causing a surplus in this market. So in summary, if a price floor occurs below the equilibrium price, it's non-binding and has no effect on the market. All right, let's flip this around now and do a non-binding price ceiling. Remember, currently this market is operating at this P star equilibrium price. So if the government comes in and says, hey guys, this is our new price ceiling, aka our new maximum price that the market can operate at, that invalidates any prices above the ceiling. But the market is already operating below the ceiling. So consumers and producers won't care that this price ceiling is above their already existing equilibrium price and the price ceiling will not have any impact on the market. It's not going to cause a shortage because we're already operating below that new maximum price. So in summary, if a price ceiling is set above the equilibrium price, it's gonna be non-binding and have no impact on the market. All right, that's how you identify whether or not a price floor or ceiling is non-binding. It all comes down to if the consumers and producers are gonna care about it being set and if it will adjust their quantities demanded and supply. With that being said, if you want my help with the rest of your class too, go check out that microeconomics cram kit that I mentioned. I've spent literal years packing together basically everything you need to know for this class in the shortest amount of time. These concepts aren't rocket science, they just can get easily overcomplicated in class. So I run through them all in about a minute each and then give you practice problems to help support your understanding.